This is Twit. There is a generative AI music already. It's not, I don't think it's quite there yet. This is a paper from Google Research. They call it Music LM. It's based on large language model like Lambda. Generating music from a text prompt. Yep. Here is uh, the main soundtrack of, this is the prompt, the main soundtrack of an arcade game. It is fast paced and upbeat. We didn't check my audio. Do you, uh, do you, I think we'll, we'll try it. Turn my audio on. I want to play this song. It's fast paced and upbeat with a catchy electric guitar riff. The music is repetitive and easy to remember with unexpected sounds like cymbal crashes or drum rolls. Does this sound like an arcade game to you? Maybe the uh, front screen, the track motor. Maybe Sonic is running down the. That's completely AI generated. Although apparently it's generated by an AI that does a fair amount of pl plagiarizing, which is why uh, oh, yeah, it's Google totally is not released, releasing to the yeah, it's public right. yet. Totally plagiar. Here's um, a slow tempo bass and drums led reggae song. Yeah, man. Everybody get together. We're going down to the beach. No, no. Ant says no to that one. <laughs> Seems like it has the potential to blow away the stock music industry pretty quickly. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot better than the crap stock music we, we, we've yeah. been using. And, um, and it won't be stock music. <laughs> You'll be able to generate something unique to your own. 280,000 hours of real music uh, is the training model to generate uh, coherent songs for descriptions of significant complexity, as the creators put it. Um, you want to you want to feel like you're lost in space, Ant? Ant is becoming our uh, our taste tester. Let's see if Ant agrees. This is sounds like an AI did it, doesn't it? Sounds like robot music. Now here's the question: Can we get taken down from YouTube for playing that? <laughs> you may get sued by a bot. See, that's good. No, that's well. That's going to be the interesting thing. I think actually, um, who owns you know, if you're that? able to generate these unique things, right? Well, that that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it becomes a very interesting question, which is, you know, I think that this YouTube um, it, it relies on someone else being able to say, I have you know, the copyright of this, and and usually have like a, a file register someplace that their uh, you know a content ID can go and find the same thing. But if it's a uniquely original file, then content ID is not going to find it. So that's... What a world we live that's in. That's cool. What a world. But do you think there might be some um, cool stuff that might happen if actual human mu musicians work yes. with some of these tools to brainstorm and, yes. and riff on ideas? And, and it seems like that could be kind of cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's happening right no, now. I no, exactly. I mean, I honestly, I think that the way that, and I know that a lot of creators are really freaked out by generative art and and generative music and, and all this stuff. And, and I understand the fear, but for me, what excites me about this is that the best AI art that I've seen has been from actual artists. Like those are the people who've been using the best prompts or have been yeah, taken some of the sense. prompts and have taken some of the results and have then made really great things. And I think with music, it's the exact same way, right? Like you might be able to get something that sounds slightly better than, than than stock music, but it's still not going to be great, right? It's going to take a real artist to then take that and edit it and interpolate it and do what real artists have always done and turn it into something else. And and so the what I've tried to, been trying to tell people, because this isn't going away, this whatever your feelings on, on this stuff is, it's not going away and it's only going to become bigger. We can have conversations about ethics and we should. We can have conversations about safety rails and we should, but this is not going away. And so what I've been, the conversation I've been having with people for the last year or so is like, embrace this as a tool to your arsenal to make new, unique and better things rather than looking at this as some sort of existential threat, because you're not going to outpace this. This is not going to be something that you can get away from, but it might be something that if you are able to use you could actually enhance, you know, the, the stuff that you that you do naturally. And and that goes for writers as well. Last week, Brianna Wu, who was on the show, her husband writes uh, science fiction, among many other uh, things, said that Frank was stuck with a story that he was, I think he was writing for Analog, but he was stuck with a story and uh, he gave a very extensive prompt to ChatGPT, which wrote kind of a mediocre 
story, but came up with a lot of things that became a starting point for him and unstuck him. And that seems like that's a very good use of something like chat GPT. Um, I've heard so many descriptions. I love, I love, uh, I love your name uh, for it. What is it? Glib PT? <laughs> uh, Glibbot, I guess. Glibbot. I didn't re I like remember Glibbot. I wrote that. Glibbot. Yeah, that's good. Like that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I've also heard it say uh, the ultimate mansplainer because it, because it's confidently <laughs> wrong, right? And it says, it's, and it's so confident. It's a little it's so patronizing. Confident. It's like, oh no, let me explain to you how the world works. Although if you tell it that it's wrong, then it gets really humble and, it and apologizes, and apologizes yeah. at great length and says it'll never do it again. Does it correct itself? If you correct it, does it stay correct? Yes. And in fact, some, if it says something that's correct and you tell it that it's wrong, it will apologize for that too. <laughs> Do you want to hear about the latest news happening in the tech world from the people who write the article, sometimes from the people who are actually making the news? Well, we got a show for you here at twit.tv. It's called Tech News Weekly. Me, Jason Howell, and my co-host, Micah Sargent, we talk with some amazing people each and every Thursday on Tech News Weekly, and we share a little bit of our own insights in each of us bringing a story of the week. That's at twit.tv slash TNW. Subscribe right now.